Hello everyone and welcome to Geeks for Geeks. The problem which you are going to see today is to find a Pythagoras triplet in an array. So in this problem, you will be given an array of integers and you have to write a function that returns true in case there is a triplet ABC available, uh, which is a Pythagoras triplet. Uh, by Pythagoras triplet, we mean that it satisfies the condition that A square plus B square is equal to C square. So we basically have to find three numbers. So a triplet where the sum of squares of two numbers is equal to square of the third one. So let's see with an example, what do we mean exactly? So suppose uh, we are given this array, which is the first array in the given example. So uh, uh, in this example, you see that you have a uh, Pythagoras triplet three, four and five because three square plus four square is equal to five square so the output should be true let's look in the second example so now here we do not have a pythagoras triplet so the output would be false so the first method which is the naive method uh, is basically to run three loops and the three loops will uh, pick up three elements so each uh, each loop will be picking one element and so inside the third loop will be checking if the uh, the three elements which are picked so do they form a Pythagoras triplet if they do then we say we then we return true otherwise we return false so because we are having three nested loops here so the time complexity of this solution will be order of n cube uh, let's see the uh, simple implementation here so and this is the function is triplet which takes as an argument the array and the size of the array okay so now uh, i've discovered in the algorithm we have three loops so first loop second loop and the third loop so note that every loop is just uh, actually picking one one element and we are just making sure that uh, same element is not repeated uh, if, if not picked up by any loop okay so inside the third loop this is the body of the third loop what we are doing is we are basically uh, squaring the element so uh, element at index i is squared into x element at index, index j is squared into y element at index k is squared into z now you have x, y, and z, which are the squared values of the three picked up uh, elements. Now we are checking that if they form a Pythagoras triplet or not. So we try all the three permutation combination possible. And then if uh, any of those are true, we, that's why we have an OR operator here. So if then any of them are true, then we return true. Otherwise, if uh, the result of all these loops return nothing, then we return false here. That means that because this uh, part didn't the upper part didn't return uh, true, so uh, it means that there is no Pythagoras triplet available. Okay, so as the time complexity was order of n cube there, so uh, we definitely have a better method, and the better method is to uh, use sorting. So in this method, uh, we'll be solving the problem in order of n square time complexity okay so we do this by uh, sorting the array first so uh, so this algorithm will basically have three steps so the first step will be to do square of every element in the input array so that would take order of n time complexity uh, why because we just have to iterate over all the elements once and keep on uh, squaring their value okay so then uh, we basically have to sort the squared array in the increasing order so the uh, sorting will take order of n log n time okay so we are done with two steps so now we are we have an sorted array uh, with uh, squared value of every element okay great so now uh, it becomes a simple problem to find a triplet abc such that a is equal to b plus c so sum of two numbers should be equal to the third number so that is the problem which uh, which is left in the third step okay so 
how are we actually going to uh, do this third step how are we going to find this triplet so for that we are going to fix uh, a as the last element of the sorted array so remember that this array sorted in increasing order so the last element will be the uh, biggest element so we choose it as the a value now uh, we'll try to find a pair uh, b and c uh, in the subarray that is remaining uh, between the first element and the a such that the sum of b and c is equal to a so we are just finding the uh, pair of two elements uh, whose sum is equal to the third element so uh, now search for the pair b and c in the subarray between the first element and a a pair b and c with given sum can be found in order of n time so now uh, we are going to uh, do this step in order of n time we'll see how we'll do it uh, but we'll do it in order of n time now if uh, nothing is uh, no pair is found in the uh, in the step b for the current uh, value of a then we move a one position back and then we repeat the step 3b so this is the step 3b so we repeat the step for the changed a which is which will be uh, one position before the current value of a so we keep changing a till we find the pythagoras triplet if uh, we do not find the pythagoras triplet for any of those elements then we just say that uh, pythagoras triplet doesn't exist so uh, here's the code so let me first of all zoom in a bit yeah okay so here we have the if triplet function so in this uh, if triplet function we take as an argument the array and its size now the first step was to square all the elements so we run a for loop we just square all the elements here so this takes the time complexity of order of n now we assume that we have a function sort uh, which is sorting the elements in uh, time complexity order of n log n okay so uh, now uh, we'll fix one element and then one by one and then we'll uh, find the other two elements so uh, the uh, index i is the uh, fixed value which we were talking about and then we'll find the other elements l and r uh, the index these are basically the index so elements at index l and r uh, will be the uh, the elements whose sum should be equal to the element at index i so we initialize l equal to 0 r equal to i minus 1 because i is the value which we have fixed that is the that was the uh, greatest value uh, so uh, we have to find the other two numbers between uh, 0 and i minus 1 so we initialize l equal to 0 r equal to i minus 1 so then uh, till the time l is smaller than r we uh, run this condition so here we uh, just check that if uh, the sum of array uh, sum of elements at uh, index l and r is equal to the element at index i if that is the case then we have found the pythagoras triplet so we just return true if we don't then uh, we'll have to adjust the value of, uh, of l or r so what we do is we compare the sum uh, with the value of uh, value at index i so if the sum is basically uh, smaller so we increase the value of l if the sum is greater then we'll decrease the value of r this is done because if the value of uh, the elemented index i is great uh, is greater than the uh, current sum of the elemented index l and r then uh, we basically uh, need to have a bigger element uh, to match the elemented index i so that's why we do an l plus plus otherwise we need to decrease the value of the sum so we do a r minus minus so we try to do it for uh, all the elements uh, till the till the time we find the pythagoras triplet if this for loop uh, completes that is it iterates over all the elements and still we haven't found any pythagoras triplet then we just return false so the time complexity of this solution is order of n square so uh, let's see why so uh, the this for the first step it was order of n because we are iterating over the elements once for this step it was order of n log n 
now for this step the time complexity is order of n square why because uh, this first for loop makes the time complexity n and then this step can uh, maximum can take uh, can have a maximum time complexity of order of n again so because we have uh, n time complexity here and then n time complexity here so it becomes n square so because of this step we have the overall time complexity of order of n square so uh, we in total we discussed two methods so the first method was the naive method which had the time complexity of order of n cube then we used the sorting one uh, in the sorting method the time complexity was order of n square okay so uh, that is all for this tutorial uh, do visit this link where you can find all the stuff we discussed in this tutorial and also run the code uh, on the id on the geeks or geeks website itself thank you very much